And so when I met uh, Davide San, who is the uh, creative director of this game. When he missed me, he said Davide's name. I said, I said Davide, get up, get up. So I pushed him up. It was, me, it was my hand, you see, pushing him up. That's acclaimed video game composer Grant Kirkhope. Over the last 20 years, he's been the man behind some of video games' most iconic music, from GoldenEye 007 in the Banjo-Kazooie series, to the new ukulele that dropped early 2017. Grant is known for his ability to write a memorable melody, and it's this reason he was asked to write the music for the game being announced here at Ubisoft's E3 conference this year, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which, as the title suggests, represents one of the strangest video game crossovers in the last decade, combining Ubisoft's slapstick hit franchise The Rabbids with video game royalty and Nintendo brand hero, Mario. So I shit myself, basically. I, I sat there and thought, how the, how the hell am I going to write music for Mario? With Mario's involvement on the project, Grant was given the opportunity to rearrange some of Mario's most iconic music, originally composed by this gentleman, the legendary Koji Kondo. You know, Koji Kondo is the greatest video composer in the world, in my opinion. You know, he's written all those amazing tunes for all those amazing years. How on earth am I going to follow in his footsteps and it be any good and not be hated? I had the opportunity to interview Grant, and I asked him how he ended up here as part of the creative team behind the game, after having so much anxiety around taking on the music for Mario. Well, that's because when he was offered the contract to work on the game, he wasn't told about Mario's involvement at all. But it was a bit weird. When they first, they first contacted me in like November of 2014, and I got an email through LinkedIn from the producer there called Gianmarco Zana. He said to me, by the way, Grant, we've got a game we think you might be a good fit for. It's called RKB Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I was like, oh, it's a Rabbids game. And I like the Rabbids. They're funny things. My kids watch the cartoons. They're really funny, you know. So uh, flew out to, I flew out like in maybe April. And I was escorted back of the studio through lots of security doors and the big, and I thought, it's a bit secretive for a Rabbids game. And then to a, a door at the side of the studio with two sound guys from Davide Soliani, who's the the creative director, sat, sat down and said, yeah, so I better show you the game, right? So yeah, yeah, you know, love to so turn the TV and Mario stood there. And I was thinking, oh, you know, they probably played Mario before I got there. They're just messing around, you know. And he started to move Mario around. I was like, hang on a minute, what, what's, what's that? He said, yeah, it's a Mario game. Did no one tell you? I said, no. <laughs> Like, don't you think that's quite an important detail to, come to, 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 to tell me? Oh, yeah, Mario. Yeah, is that all right? I was like, uh, oh. So I was kind of nodding, going, yeah, yeah, no trouble thinking, shit, I'm gonna, they're going to kill me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be hated the rest of my life. So that's how, that's how, that's how it kicked off. Yeah. That, was, that was amazing, right? Like, you know, you know, to get to work with Mario, my God, that, that, it's like his video game royalty, right? Mario games have taken many different forms over the years. Originally created by Shigeru Miyamoto at Nintendo, they recently celebrated the 30th anniversary of Mario's first game, Super Mario Bros., a simple 2D platformer for the Nintendo Entertainment System, which dropped back in 1985. Skip ahead 11 years to 1996, Mario would make the jump from 2D to 3D with Super Mario 64, which remains today the best-selling Nintendo 64 game of all time, coming in at 12 million copies sold worldwide. Needless to say, for Grant to have access to the music from that game is kind of a big deal. Like, I got to rearrange uh, the, the castle theme from Mario 64, which is my favourite Mario game for me, you know. And there's Peach's Castle in RKB, so I got to rearrange that. I could I'd rearrange it, mix my own, mix together my own stuff. <laughs> You know, and like to do that was just absolutely fun. I was in tears doing it, thinking I can't believe I'm actually getting to write this piece of music using the Mario, the, the castle theme. <laughs> Mr. Miyamoto actually specifically asked for, you know, the, 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 going into the pipe noise, that like, noise when you go into the pipes. He said, why don't you do a rabbit, can you, can you do a rabbit version of that? Like, so Miyamoto, Miyamoto's asking for that. It's like, you know, you, you, I'll do anything you want me as Mr. Miyamoto. <laughs> so I, did, I tried to, I came up with a few little, little versions of that, like use instruments and all that, put it together. He liked it, it's in the game. <laughs> Nintendo keep things very specific when it comes to the finer details of their Mario brand, all the way down to the exact notation and tempo of Mario's iconic coin sound. And it's this reason that over the last few years, Nintendo have been cracking down on Mario fan games being developed without official permission. Each character in Mario and Rabbids clocks in at over a thousand individual animations, and it was important that Mario's animation set, whether it be small reactions or bigger movements, were being cross-checked with Nintendo. So I asked Grant if the same thing was happening with his rearrangements. Anything Nintendo that involves their stuff, they really, really want to know about it. So like all the animations had to, pack, had to run through Nintendo. I mean, I mean everything, right? Equally with the music, they were the same way. 
I, t- I did some of the little jingles. You know what goes? Da, 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 and game over t- theme, right? So I orchestrated that and with the, with the live orchestra for that, right? And um, I had to work it out by ear. Uh, and I got one of the parts slightly wrong. It was harmonically correct. I had it like, it was a bit like that. It went the wrong way. And they spotted it and said, oh, and the, Nintendo super polite, right? Like, you know, sounds great, but w- would you mind just uh, correcting this part? And they sent me the manuscript of the music. And I was like this going, this has come from Nintendo. The actual music to this jingle. Like, I just thought it was just, I, that was a little moment. I was like, oh my God, this is fantastic. I was blown away that even after 20 years of working in the industry, Grant still has this sense of giddiness when it comes to working on video games. Oh my god, I, I, I think the day I stopped being giddy, so she, the day I should retire. The thing about the Mario game is that everyone had played Mario for years as kids, right? It's like that thing when you're a kid, like, you know, and like, you don't want to break it. You want to, you want, you, you're, so, you're so respectful of that property, that thing, that like getting the chance to touch it is so special. You want to try so hard to make it the best it can be, and the whole team felt like that. And it shows when you play the game, it's so polished, and it's so respectful, and it's so passionate. You can feel it. I think that. To get that across on a game is pretty hard. With the launch date of Kingdom Battle drawing closer, I think we're about to see some amazing things from Grant and the Ubisoft team because despite being the devs behind the game, they remain Mario fans first, which means with Mario and Rabbids, we're about to get the world's first Nintendo-approved Mario fan game. Watch it all.